This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. For joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer songwriter originally from Hawaii, who now resides in the great city of Los Angeles. I'm speaking to Miss Sierra Blacks. Sierra, hey. how are you doing today? I'm doing good. <laughs> All Happy right. to be here. Yeah, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm Talk glad to have you. music. Yes. Um, <laughs> We've been trying to get this interview in for a while, yeah. and for whatever reason, we just couldn't connect. So I'm glad we are yes. uh, talking today. The stars um, have aligned. Finally. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, you have uh, what I consider one of the I really like the title. Uh, oh wow! Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to get into that. Okay. Tease. We'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but before we do, um, tell us about Sierra Blacks. So, um, singer songwriter from, uh, Kauai, Hawaii, um, small little Island, uh, in the Hawaiian chains. Um, I grew up, you know, really like small town surfer girl, just kind of, um, real easy going lifestyle. And, um, and I moved to LA probably about six years ago to fully pursue music. Um, I lived on Oahu right after high school and I went to music school and learned a bunch of stuff about classical music and operatic singing and it was awesome. It was a good foundation. And then, but finally I was like, okay, I wanna do my own thing. And I wanna write about um, my own experiences, other people's experiences. And um, I just felt like LA was the place to be um, although like, I'll, I'll never, I'm always going to be a Hawaii girl at heart, but definitely, um, it's, it's nice being out in LA and with all the opportunities. So here I am just doing the, doing the thing. Okay. Um, let's kind of back up a little bit. Um, now you're from Hawaii. Um, was your family into music too? Yes. So, um, my grandpa, he's a, he's a pianist and he was like pretty known on the island. He played everywhere and um, his whole family were musicians. And so I, I think I kind of, uh, I grew up with music all around me, instruments all around me. Um, and so it was just kind of in my, my future, I guess, to start doing music. Um, although like when I was a kid, I didn't really, I didn't really know. You don't really think about, um, big dreams, like on a small little island, you just kind of just live day by day to day. Um, but I definitely um, always wanted to be a singer. And um, with my grandpa playing music, playing the piano, just always hearing those melodies and the classical music. And he played Gershwin a lot. And um, it was just, I just remember those days just being like one of the best like moments growing up. So yeah, definitely there's music in my family, um, but I'm definitely the only one that kind of uh, pursued it to like the next level, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And um, so you said that uh, your grandfather played Gershwin. I'm just going to just kind of fast forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the music that you sent me is very, uh, very soulful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, man, she got some soul. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. What attracted you, I mean, I think maybe for the obvious reasons, but tell us what attracted you to um, soul and R&B? So when it was kind of, I guess, I don't really remember my family playing a lot of soul music. I'm sure they did. And I just don't really have recollection of it, but it wasn't until um, I took voice lessons when I was probably at 
around like 12 is when I started. And my teacher, her name's um, Debbie Scarpell. She loved Motown. And so we just, we always, she's like every song we had to sing for like our shows was like a Motown song. And so like, I was introduced to like Aretha Franklin, all like the big names, um, Etta James and the Temptations and stuff like that. So I, f and ever since I was just like, okay, like this, this music sits well with my voice. And it was something that I just felt really connected to. But there's really no better genre than like Motown, like music, <laughs> oh, I agree. in my opinion. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the beginning where it started. Okay. Then yeah. you, um, you said, uh, let's back up. I'm sorry. Keep going no, no. back and forth. But you no, said no. you went to music school. Mm -hmm. Was that over in Hawaii? It was. I went to um, University of Hawaii. Um, I didn't get in right away. So I had to do community college first. So um, I took a music class at the community college on Kauai. And my music teacher, he was like, I, I wanted to go to the university and he was like, okay, like, let's, let's get you there. Like, let's do it. And so like, he um, helped me prepare a few songs. And, and so he kind of really like pivoted that for me. And, and without him, I definitely wouldn't have gone, ended up going. Um, so I went, ended up going to university of Hawaii. I was in the music program and it was kind of like this whole new world. Cause I was into like pop music and soul music and stuff like that. And, and I went to school thinking, okay, I'm going to do more of that. I'm just going to learn more of that. And then it was just like all classical, all opera singing, which was, which was cool. Like I'm, I'm definitely like happy that I had that experience and like got to learn that kind of foundation. Um, but it was, it was a struggle for sure. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming that yeah, because of, of that, it actually probably made you a better singer. Yeah, I think, I think um, I kind of knew, I learned how to sing opera music and it was definitely on my comfort zone. And I think like, at least it gave me confidence to know that I can sing anything, which was really cool. Um, I, a funny story, cause we had to sing like German, um, Italian, what else? German, Italian, Latin sometimes. Um, and I had this German song I had to sing for one of my recitals and I just forgot the lyrics and I just made up German like on the spot. <laughs> and like, I, I'll never forget that because I don't know, it was like, it was also like a thing that I, I needed to happen because uh, I needed, sorry, excuse me, that needed to happen to really show people like, okay, like she's, she's a performer, like no matter what, she's not going to stop. She's just going to keep on going. And so I got an A minus from, for that performance, but, um, they were still like, yeah, she kept on going. Like I have to make up German. I'll, I'll make it up. <laughs> okay. Did you speak German? No, they, they teach us phonetics. So they teach us language, how to speak different languages, uh, how to pronounce different languages. So like I took a class for all semester and it was just like learning how to speak Italian, how to speak German, and um, I'm blanking on all the other languages. Oh my gosh. Oh, French. French. Oh, that was hard. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Like we didn't know how to, I don't know how to, what it, what I was singing, like what the, what the songs meant, um, but I knew how to pronounce the words. So it's just, and these are the kinds of things they make you do in music school. <laughs> wow. That would be pretty tough to try to sing in a different language. You don't know the language. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. But you, but, you but like the music's really beautiful. Like the meaning, like the, it's very poetic. So it's like, you can, you can kind of tap in. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and then you moved to Los Angeles. Yes. And when did you move to LA? It's been about six years. So I think, um, 2000, I don't know, 14, probably 2014, 2015. Okay. Uh, yeah, I graduated from University of Hawaii, thank God, almost didn't. And um, and then me and my friend Corey, he's also a musician. Um, shout out to Corey, if he's watching later. Um, we had a band called Recent Addiction. 
and it was just kind of like a duo band and we just played shows on Oahu and um, gigs all over the place and our friends would come and just like such a good time um, but yeah we were just always singing covers and I was like hey I want to start writing my own stuff and playing my own music and so LA I left to go to LA and started playing shows out here and yeah it's been it was really awesome before COVID happened <laughs> yeah right we're gonna, we're gonna get into that too yeah exactly okay so I got sent um your song I am why I am yeah I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> with friends for it's not you it's me right and I think every every person who's been in a relationship probably heard those words before it's not yeah. you it's me. yeah right uh so it's a I great play on I'm words yeah um tell us about that song now when I read your bio um it says something about your life being a hot mess, a playful, yeah. um, I guess a playful song or rendition about your, your life being yeah. a hot mess. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's, I think I, so I came home one day and I was just like, it's hard living in LA, man. And so she's being a Hawaii girl, you know, um, and I haven't had much luck with relationships out here. And I don't know if it's really because of the guys or it's because of me but I but one day I was just like maybe it is because of me and my flaws and I was just like I'm gonna write about it and and you know like I get into situations a lot out here like it's just it's a party city you know and so just like I just thought it'd be funny to talk about like interesting moments that I've had and and not really getting it together and trying to going out at late at night, not having any money. And it's just like this ripple effect. And it's just, I don't know. So, but I also like wanted to kind of make it playful and also make it like, it's okay. Like, like we're young and you're just trying to figure it out. You're just trying to figure life out. And it's like, it's fine if you make mistakes, like own up to it. Um, and sometimes if you don't really want to own up, own up to it, just say, it's not you, it's me, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think that like part of the song is I wrote parts about like actual things that have happened, like going to the Roosevelt late at night. And, um, I met this like rapper there and, um, just, we had like a crazy crazy fun time and I don't know just like it's just it's just like trying to navigate this whole life in the city is just so interesting so I definitely wanted to put in a song okay well I think you succeeded uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a great song uh, it's not you it's me yeah um now let's talk about some of your well let me ask you uh that came out when did that come out? Because I think I got the email maybe a couple of months ago. So how long is that? Out, it came out in March. March, the, okay. End of February, beginning of March. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, how has it been? How has it been received by the public or your fans? It's right. been received pretty well. Yeah, I've for the most part got really good feedback from it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. It's, I think it's definitely, you know, it's definitely different. Like everyone's, you know, not everyone's going to like your stuff, but um, I think what people can appreciate about the song is that it's just, you know, it's, it's authentic and it's real, real musicians and like tracked real drums, real bass, like, you know, real good, like guitar. It's just like, and you know, it's not definitely like mainstream music, but I, at this point, I just want to make music that's cool and like funky and has a good rhythm, has good bass. And I think people really appreciate like the instrumentals of the song too. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code, BGRCWQX. 
Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Yeah, I um, I thought it was um, kind of a throwback to yeah. uh, some of the classic uh, R&B from maybe yeah. like 10 or, 10 or 15, 20 years ago, I guess. Yeah. But it really has a, a catchy, um, catchy kind of groove to it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you can definitely like ride down the street to listen to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's definitely yeah. good cruising music. Yeah, that's the goal. It's like dr- like music that you can listen to while you're driving. That's the goal. Okay. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about some of your, because uh, I'm looking through your your catalog of music and you, um, this is not your first song, obviously, that you released. Yeah. Tell us about some of your other songs, like uh, Good Type of Love, Loose Cannons. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, good Type of Love, um, I... He, uh, Tim Rose, who produced It's Not You, It's Me, also produced Good Type of Love. And um, it's funny because he's he has his own music. He does his own thing. And he's one of my really good friends. And he just moved to L.A. like a few years ago. And I was like, hey, I have this song. Um, I know you don't produce music, but like, you know, music so well, I feel like you can. not And then he's like, OK, well, I'm down to try. And so like we worked on like just him and I like in my room like recording the vocals and like coming up with that really cool bridge of that key change I'm still like it's it's cool like looking back at it and and, like still being like happy about like things the choices you make in your music (laughs) I'm like okay that's a crazy ass key change bridge moment but um I'm proud of it and I think we conquered that one well um yeah, good type of love was just like I just wanted to put out a like happy song you know that everyone can like relate to because I think I had like a lot of those other songs I have are kind of like moody and like kind of could be sad if you interpret it that way and I just wanted good type of love to be like um just like a bop that you can just like feel good to which is funny because the music video is like the complete opposite <laughs> right. of, of the song did you watch the video i did yes yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's interesting too okay um so let me ask you are you um are you an independent artist or do you are you signed to a label How does yeah that... I'm, I'm independent okay mm-hmm. and is it the goal to um to get a record label or get a record deal or is it just to stay yeah. independent for no i definitely i do definitely want to be a part of some label um at the end of the day, like it has to be something that I, that sits well with me and that I feel like I'm always going to be able to have my own opinions and be able to do my own thing. I would never want to be a part of a label that like controls me at all in any way. Um, so yeah, if it's, if it's like a good opportunity and it's a good deal, then I definitely would want to be part of a label, but only what if like the, like if only if it's right. Okay. Yeah, uh, we touched on it briefly about um, you know this pandemic that we're in. Um, how has the pandemic, well, outside of maybe getting out there and performing, mm-hmm. how has it affected uh, you and your music? Yeah, I think I think as far as like um, getting together with um, like studio sessions and stuff like that, like it's in the beginning, you know, a lot of things got canceled and, um, it was just mostly, I just had to like write songs at home with myself. And, and that's usually how I start songs anyways, but it was, I guess for the most part, I don't think it really changed a lot for my music career besides the performing. I, I was able to, um, still write every day and actually I had way more time to do it. Cause I, I bartend, um, as well. Um, so because we, we weren't working anymore, I had way more time to just stay at home and like, um, I don't know, just think about like stuff that songs or, or like messages that I wanted to say. And, um, yeah, for the most part, I don't think it really affected much my music as far as like recording and everything like that. Um, luckily Tim and I, like he lives, um, 
near me. He lives in his van. When I say near me, it's like parked outside. Um, so he was, we were able to like, like record stuff, you know, during the pandemic. Um, yeah, the performing part was just a bummer. So, right. but I think every single musician can like, we'll have that. We'll say that like, I mean, I didn't have any like tour dates booked or anything, but you know, was, I was playing a few shows in Hollywood and we had to cancel, but it is what it is. Yeah, right. And everyone else going everyone else is going through it too. So it's not like exactly. you're the only one. Exactly. Uh, let me ask you quickly. Um uh, now I know you have some other releases. Are you preparing to release an EP on our album um this year or yeah singles for right now? You know, I would love to put out a like an EP. Um that was the goal. Um, but I'm finding myself kind of, it might just play that, just do the singles for now. And um, when the time is right, put out a, an album because I want the album to be like cohesive and I want it to be like, I really want it to be like this, something I'm super proud of. And I just don't want to put songs together just to make like an album. So um, for now I have, a, yeah, I have a bunch of songs finished, but I think I'll just be putting them out as singles. Okay. Yeah. Um, any new singles that are coming out? Um, yeah, they are. Um, I have, oh my gosh, I, I wish you could just hear this new song Tim and I are working on. Speaking of like soul music, oh, it's like, it has like a Michael Jackson, like, like thriller vibe to it. Like, all right. Can't yeah, wait you you piqued my interest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're working on that one. Um, Right now, we just we just tracked the bass with um, this guy Tyler Carroll. He played bass with um, like the Jonas Brothers and um, Alan Stone and stuff like that. So like I'm like, yeah, I got like a famous guy on my track. That's cool. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's coming out soon, hopefully. Okay, let me ask you, um, what do you uh, what do you hope people get out of your music when they listen to it? Yeah, I just. I hope that like, especially, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're like what gender you are, you know, like I just want it, everyone to like, you know, I'm pretty honest and open, like with my lyrics and I'm vulnerable. And I just want people to know that they can be the same way. Like you don't need to hide parts of yourself. And I just, I just want people to like somehow in, hopefully they can interpret that when they hear my music and I, and somehow like give them inspiration to do their own thing and be themselves. And I'm definitely just going to try and keep on. Yeah. Like being an inspiration for that, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Let yeah. me ask you too. Um, now you went to, like you said, music school and mm -hmm. you like to express yourself in writing. Does writing songs or does writing come easy for you? I think it does. Um, I think it does. It's definitely, there's, it's something that can't be forced. Uh, I notice like I write my favorite songs when I just like in like five minutes sometimes, mm. you know, it's just like something that just flows and it's something that you just like, that needs to be released. And I think if you can like just tap into that as a songwriter, then it should come fairly easy. But I do notice like, when we're like in sessions with other songwriters and um, sometimes I, I do have difficulty writing just because I might not be tapped into that, that wavelength that I usually am when I'm alone, you know? Gotcha. So are you the kind of person that has like a notepad by the bed and when you get hit with something, you well, write it down? Well, I just, I don't have a notepad. I use my, um, my notes on my phone. Oh yeah, so <laughs> yeah. technology forgot. I know. I'm like, I want to be cool and be like, yeah, I have a notepad, but like, no, I just use right. my phone. I forgot. <laughs> Who has a notepad anymore? I, I used to have a notepad, but now these, I, I don't know. Like, we just skyrocketed these days with technology. It's just, I'm, I'm sucked right in. Right. Let yeah. me ask you. Yeah, since you, you we spoke on technology, um, with the way technology is, do you um? Do you really need a label? I mean, with so many um, interest instruments 
in your um yeah like honestly don't you really don't and like I think the only downfall not having a label is just you know the money part like getting you know having enough of a budget to um pay you know you know like your producers or go on tour and stuff like that and it's it's just so much harder to not have a label but like if you really want it then you surround yourself with like um people that are doing the same thing and just try to make as much connections as you can um is super important and you know I it took me a while to kind of like figure that out but since being in LA for about six years, they kind of, now I've, I've been on that, like I've met many people and luckily the people who are still in my life, like support my music and it's been doable not having a label. So I definitely don't think that anyone needs it. You just need to, if you're going to be independent, you just need to work, work really hard and do everything on your own. But it's, it's hard, but it's at the end of the day too, like you want to, you don't want to be controlled by a label. If they're making you become an artist that you're not, that's, that's my biggest fear. I'm just like, I'll, I'll still stay independent as long as I can until I do feel like there's like a small label that understands my music and we'll see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Keep putting out good music and yeah. Um, then they really can't change you because you have a following, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, have you done like the Instagram live and the Facebook live and things like that? Yeah, I haven't done too much of it. Um, I've done Instagram live during the um, pandemic, which was like really fun. You know, like I think in the beginning, everyone was like really stoked to, um, watch live Instagram live, like live music on their phones and stuff like that. And but I think after a while, everyone kind of was like, it's not the same, you know, it's like going physically seeing that person live, but it was, it's definitely so good to do live shows um, for Instagram and Facebook. Like you do catch a following doing that. So yeah, I've done a few. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think you're, I think you'd be wise to do them, uh, particularly now since you can't get out and tour, yeah. at least yeah. keep your name out there. Um, Sierra, tell people where they can reach out to you on uh, social media. Yes. So, um, you can find me on Instagram, Sierra Black's music, B-L-E-X music. Um, I'm also on Facebook as well. Um, Sierra Black's, you can find me there. Um, you can find my music on Spotify, Apple, also on YouTube under Sierra Black's. And I think I'm the only Sierra Black's, which is great. (laughs) Okay. There's only one of me. Yeah, right. I would encourage people to to listen to Sierra's <laughs> music. Um, if you want that old school R and B sound, she definitely pulls it off. I was actually really surprised, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> girl, got some soul here. What's going yeah. on?" I know, right? Right. Congratulations on all your success, by the way. Thank you. Um, I'm so happy. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add before we um, before I let you get back to your evening here? Yeah, I mean, um, I just thank you for having me. And um, we got to keep soul music alive, music, you know, music from the soul, music from the heart. It's important. Um, We got to be authentic to ourselves, to one another and be kind to one another. And, you know, if you're a singer songwriter striving to come to LA or wherever you are to pursue your dreams, like just be yourself and don't let anyone change you. Okay. Quick, one quick question since yeah. you spoke on that a little bit. What type of advice would you give aspiring artists or singers who may want to uh, follow in your footsteps? I definitely think, um, you know, like, first of all, just keep on writing. Like every song, you never know what song is going to take off. Um, try your best to like gain a circle of really good friends and musicians around you and, um, and just got to work really hard at it. Um, and you know, if you, you know, just don't, it's gonna, it's gonna be a struggle and it's, there's gonna be like bad days for sure, but just like 
just know that you have something special and that like um as long as you're authentic to yourself and I think that people will see that as well so um yeah all right that's great advice from coming from Sierra <laughs> uh Miss Sierra I appreciate you uh, taking the time today thanks thanks Todd I'm so happy we got to finally do this yeah, finally, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was going to happen, but uh, yeah. I'm glad. Um, I know the last time you, you weren't feeling too well. Um, and yeah. so I hope everything is well. And we kind of touched on COVID a little bit, but yeah. hopefully everybody in your, your family or your inner circle is staying safe. And yes. um, you too. You know, hopefully there's um, brighter days ahead. We yeah. can get out there and start touring and promoting this uh, great music you have. Cool. Yeah, thank you. I can't wait. Not a problem. And that's Sierra Blacks on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Sierra Blacks. You can find out more about Sierra on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out all our merch at The Soul Shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Whitson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.